Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Family Vacation Center. We're doing home edition this year, which means that we are bringing all of our fun things from camp right to you at home. And one of our best fun traditions every year is that we have the reptile family. They've been coming to camp for more than 10 years to put shows out for us. And we are really, really excited to showcase Matt and his friends, see some familiar faces. And all right, it's time to enjoy the show. Let's see awesome. it, Matt. <laughs> Thank you so much, Harry. It's so great to see you guys. We're gonna have some fun. It's always my pleasure to come and visit you guys at Family Vacation Center during the summer times. It was always on a Wednesday and it was always really great. Well, you know, this year we're gonna have some fun just like this, which would be pretty cool too. Hey, so uh, my name is Matt, in case you don't remember, and behind me you can see there's the baskets and the containers of all the creepy crawly friends that love to travel and visit you guys. And actually, uh, they got a chance to go to a show this morning. We just did a, a show and tell, which was kind of fun. Not quite doing touching and holding yet, but hopefully in the future. Yep. So we're going to get a chance, though, to get really up close and personal because we got the video right here and I can get the animals extra, extra close for you guys, which is kind of cool. We're going to see some great creatures that actually got up this morning and they took their baths. So they're even still pretty clean. I mean, they want to be clean when they come out for a show. It's true. And of course, remember, if you do touch animals, always wash your fingers when you're done before you pick your nose or have a snack. That's always great because they're animals, they pee and poop, and not everyone gets a bath like my guys do. Well, you should still wash hands out touching mine too. Anyways, we're gonna start with the creepiest, crawliest creature in my show. You might remember this guy, she's always really nice. In fact, she's also the only other hairy creature besides myself. Uh-oh, guys, she's in her car seat, which is how they often travel when they get a chance to go and cruise. Come on up here, Rochelle. Oh man, oh man, Rochelle is really cool. Oh, dude. Do you guys remember Rochelle? She is really, really rad. She is our tarantula, or one of them at least. And she's definitely nice. She's cruising on my fingers there. And check it out here, guys. Oh, man. She's called a rose tarantula because she kind of has some pinkish color on her set. Which is really kind of cool all those legs oh man she's actually going on really well hey she has little hooks on her feet put my hand there just in case she decides to slip but nope she is holding on excellently today yeah she is always really awesome and good for looking at it's true now in all the years that i've been hanging out with tarantulas and bringing them to shows i've only been bitten twice it was once until about a year ago or so and these guys hadn't come out for a while and i brought them out for a virtual show and and one of the tarantulas wasn't in the mood. And I said, okay, you don't have to work today. They just gave me a little tea nibble. You know what, actually, the way they eat their lunch is definitely neat. They have special mandibles underneath. Let me see if we get them up there nice and close. Oh, geez. It's kind of hard to see the, whoa, man, oh, man. And of course, what's kind of cool, when they grab their lunch and bring it to their mouth, those mandibles go, ur, 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 ur. And they kind of poke into their food and inject their venom, which is nice. It turns their food into mush. That way they can kind of go and drink you like a bug protein shake. I mean, if you were hungry, that might not be so bad in the morning. It's, I mean, personally, bug protein shakes aren't my favorite. I don't think I'd go for something like that. I'd rather have a, a, a smoothie or a, or a chocolate milkshake or something. But I mean, dude, if you're a tarantula, dude, that's how they get their energy, which is really kind of cool. Look at those cool legs. There's her eyes right up there on the top. Oh, geez. That little fuzzy spot right there in the middle. Let me see. Can we see that very well? Oh, man. There we go. Kind of neat. She's really, really sweet. Yep, Rochelle is awesome. And, of course, one of my favorite things that she can do is, of course, by using her spinnerets right there in the back. Sometimes she'll let me have some spider silk. Can you guys see that spider silk? Oh, man. It kind of glitters in the sunlight, which is definitely nice there. Whoa. Whoa. The spider silk is awesome, awesome stuff there, guys. Now, of course, a lot of spiders build big old webs up in the trees or on the ground or somewhere they can catch their food, except tarantulas, a little too heavy to hang out in the web. Yep. She would much rather put her silk right there on the ground and hold the twigs and leaves together so she can make a little burrow, which is nice. She'll go into her burrow and she'll hang out feeling nice and comfortable and safe sometimes. She can always cruise on out to go and catch some bugs or other things and whoa, a pretty good idea. Except if someone comes too close, they might be like, oh man, a creature, I'm gonna check that guy. You know what? She doesn't smell too bad. You might think, hey, I could eat that guy. Whoa, 
she has a great defense. She can actually use her leg and go quick, 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 quick. And she kind of kicks. She kicks and kicks those little hairs. They get up in the air. They might get into your eyes or nose or mouth or face. And then you'll start to itch and probably sneeze. And you won't be thinking about eating tarantula. You'll just want to find a bunch of mud to stick your face into to get that itchiness all off. Like, seriously, not a bad idea for the tarantula. I really like these guys. They're, whoa, look at all those legs. Do you guys remember how many legs a spider has? I bet you know. You can use your fingers and show me. Or you can just say it out loud. Oh, man. Oh, man. Ooh. Yep. Tarantulas and spiders, they are arachnids. I see it. You got it, guys. Eight legs, which is pretty cool. Let's count her legs. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> eight legs. Excellent. Wait. Yeah, yeah, eight legs. We got it right. It's cool because they have four legs on one side and four legs on the other, and four plus four is math. Like that. Ooh. Although in the front, you might notice there are some little smaller guys that kind of stick out. Those guys are the pedipalps, and they use those to grab their lunch and bring it to their mouth. I know. So they kind of work like walking legs, except they're not actually true walking legs. And that's totally. See you later there, Rochelle. Always super sweet. And didn't even try to go for a nibble because I don't taste like bugs, luckily. And she's in a great mood. Pretty neat. All right, Rochelle, we'll get you back into your car seat there. Thank you very, very much. We got to meet some more cool, creepy, crawly friends. Oh, she, she's got a hold on me. She doesn't want to let go. Got to go back inside your car seat. There we go. All the way inside there. Thank you very much. You did excellent, my friend. Yeah. You know, we used to pet our tarantulas a little bit, and we thought that fuzziness was really soft, except we were always itchy when we were through. And they got kind of bald after a while, which is why we stopped petting our tarantulas. Now, I'm not itchy, and she's not bald. Life is cool. Okay, but now it's time for us to meet someone else who's really nice. Uh-oh. Let's check out a little lizard. I think we got a basket right over here with, yep, yeah, it's Lenore. Hey, Lenore. Whoa. Lenore. And little friend of my Nora's kind of cool friends. She was in front of real, she was in front of people for real today. And she was like, whoa, they're looking at me, dude. And she got all wiggly. But I was like, we're cool. We'll get back in front of the camera again. She seems to like the camera just a little more uh, since she hasn't been out in public for a while, which is fine. Oh, geez. Lenore is a leopard gecko. Now, geckos are professional climbers, actually. A lot of geckos have special little frills on their toes to help them get a better grip when they're climbing in the branches and the trees, which works out nice. They can hold on to leaves and everything, except this guy, she's from the desert out in Pakistan. It gets pretty hot sometimes and not as many trees for her to climb in. So instead, the tree, she's a kind of cool which is also why she has claws you see those little claws on her feet oh man oh man oh dude those little claws help her get a good grip in the rocks she can climb up and find a crack or a crevice or a cave someplace really great to hide i know that's not a bad idea for a little buddy to go and hide when it's really hot outside uh oh she wants to wiggle she's like get me over there to check out that computer let me see it there we go my friends nice Oh, dude. And so when it is time for her to go out looking for some food is usually the same time the sun is starting to go down. These guys are crepuscular, so they're up in the evenings and the mornings and even nocturnal throughout the night. So that's usually when other things like she might want to gobble up or cruise in too, because otherwise in the daytime, it's too hot outside. She loves catching bugs and other creepy crawly stuff that works out pretty great there. Whoa, she's always eating those little bugs because they taste delicious. Do you guys like eating bugs? No, not, not really. Did you know some bugs are actually not so bad? I mean, some people really love eating lobsters and shrimp and crabs. They taste pretty good to me. Those are basically just bugs from the sea. Hmm, maybe bugs, there's something to them. I mean, those ones are kind of salty, I guess. And that's probably why they taste good. I don't know about crickets or worms. Ooh, unless you dip them in chocolate. I've heard they're pretty good that way. I mean, that's what I've heard. It could be true. Ooh, now, 
someone else were up there uh, looking for a snack in the middle of the night, they might see this guy saying, whoa, I can eat that gecko. A gecko looks delicious. I wouldn't recommend it. It hasn't worked out well for everyone who's tried it. Although other creatures looking for a snack might be like, oh man, check that creature out. Ooh, she'll get her tail nice and wiggling all around. And when she wiggles that tail, it looks kind of like your head. It's kind of roundish. It's soft like a marshmallow. You're thinking, oh man, she looks pretty great. And whoa, where are you going there, my friend? And if you go in for a bite, she'll actually let her tail come off which would hurt, I'm sure, a lot. But hey, she would still have her head, her body, and her legs, and she would have a chance to grow her tail back because she ran away and hid, probably back into her cave again. Oh man, what an excellent idea for a lizard, just like this. We call that caudal autonomy when animals can let their tails go. Pretty cool. Oh man, oh man. Her scaly skin is really awesome too. It kind of feels like graham cracker crust. Her tail is about as soft as a chocolate might want to eat her up so maybe maybe not yep and her skin is pretty much waterproof when i put her in her bath in the morning which is cool the water just kind of it hangs out right on the outside but doesn't soak on in it just kind of she stays all nice and dry it's like a bubble of air which is pretty excellent those little scales are rad look at those big eyes Ooh. and one more thing that geckos do that is extra rad geckos have vocal cords and they can they can speak they go ar, 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 ar. it's kind of silly sometimes i hear that in the middle of the night and i'm like do i have a bunch of dogs i don't think i do i have one dog and he's really old he doesn't do much he just kind of lays there and, and the frogs i mean they made a little noise not too much it's the geckos they're like saying dude bring us more bugs we'll get more bugs in the morning right cool all right she's gonna hit the road so we can make a few more friends here hey Back inside your car seat, Lenore. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Now we're getting a little bigger. It's time for one of my very favorite friends to come and join us in the show. Let's meet Elwood and Taliqua. They should be right back over here. Don't get back just yet. There we go. They got this tall basket today. Hey, guys, come on up and say hello. They're hiding in their leaves. They love to burrow and kind of try to disappear. Oh, man. There goes Mr. Elwood. He's really, really neat. And Tilliqua, where are you hiding? Oh, there's Tilly. Tilly's also really cool. I really like these lizard friends. They are pretty awesome dudes. Now, of course, these guys are my skins are pretty rad. You see, they have kind of long lean bodies and little teeny legs for kind of digging and wiggling and not so good for climbing in the trees, which is totally, you're peeing on me. It's okay. I get peed on almost every day. I mean, when you work with the animals, what do you expect? You know, animals pee and poop whenever the Again, thank you very much. You guys are lucky. You guys are on that side of the camera. You might have gotten peed on also. Whoa. Yep. These guys are pretty interesting, creepy, crawly friends. They're really cool. These guys are the blue tongue skinks. Did you notice the tongue sticking out of that guy's mouth? Oh, dude, their tongues are extra, extra blue. In fact, bright colors can be a great deterrent, a distraction, a way to keep other creatures all away. Hey, normally they try to hide by blending in because their scaly skin, their pattern helps them, and it's great. They know how to camouflage, but if you saw that guy, you might think, whoa, I could eat that walking sausage. He looks delicious. And if you get too close, that's when their mouth opens up really, really big and wide. The tongue starts wiggling in. Watch out. You're thinking, wait, a red mouth, a blue tongue, a hissing sound. That guy's venomous or poisonous. And you might let him get away. It's his chance to run and cruise and hide. He'll dig into the dirt and leaves. He'll burrow in the ground again. A pretty good idea for a lizard like my friend Elwood here. Yep, one of the blues. I like these guys. They're actually not venomous or poisonous. If you put your fingers in, your, in their mouth, which I do not recommend, they might think is that lunch and bite and well, it could hurt a little bit, except you would not be in that much trouble. You know what, your finger, it'd still be there and you'd be ouch, like dude, it might bleed a little bit, but you'd survive. No venom or poison for these guys, just a strong bite, right dude? You're kind of cool. Yep, the blue tongue skinks are some of my favorites. Now, of course, sometimes when these guys come out, people say it looks just like a snake. And you know, it kind of does because they're so long. Although these guys have a few body parts that snakes don't have. Like, check it out. Right there, you can see there's an ear hole. Snakes don't have ear holes. 
No, no ears at all on a snake. They feel the vibrations, which is cool. If you look on this side, you might notice, yep, this guy can actually even blink his eyes. He's going to blink for us, or you're just kind of hanging out. Yeah, he's like, I'm watching those guys nice and carefully, dude. But they can blink because lizards have eyelids, which is rad. Snakes do not, and that's okay. And, of course, the arms and legs are a giveaway. I mean, hey. Well, these guys are pretty rad. I like those blue tongue skinks. Dudes, you guys are awesome friends. I know. You know what else these guys do? They actually hatch. Or they, they, are, they don't hatch. They're born alive. They're ovoviviparous. Like, seriously? Whoa. That means their mom does not lay her eggs into a nest. She keeps those eggs inside her body. And then she has live baby skinks. Like, eight or ten or twelve sometimes. These guys are born in our home. Elwood, he's about 10 years old now. And Chaliqua, she's about 15. Seriously, my other Elwood is over 20 years old. He comes out sometimes too. These guys, they always have a great time hanging out and making friends. And luckily, we don't taste like food, but they will eat almost anything because they're omnivores. Bugs and worms and fruits and vegetables and all that stuff. It's cool. All right, dudes. We'll let you guys climb back in your car seat there. There we go. Right back over there, climbing back inside there, guys. They know where they're supposed to be. They go right back in their car seat. Thanks so much there, Elwood, Taliqua. Now, I think we're about to meet some more cool, creepy, crawly stuff. As those guys head on back inside, uh-oh, it's time for us to meet a creature who's a little bit different. This one, I got to get my fingers a little extra wet. You got to get back in there, dude. He's, he's just, like, hanging out. Like, maybe I can climb out if he's not looking. I'm watching you. Seriously, that guy. All the way back inside. There he goes. Let me get my fingers nice and wet as if it was going to rain. A little bit of rain for your fingers works out pretty great when you're holding amphibians. Because, I mean, hey, amphibians like staying wet all the time. And here's one of my very favorite dudes. Here comes Jabba. What's up, Jabba? Oh, 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 oh. Check out that guy. Jabba is pretty cool. Jabba is the African bullfrog. And these guys, well, they can eat anything that moves. As long as it is meat, this guy will eat it up. I mean, except for flies and things like that. They're too small. He wouldn't even see those probably. I mean, he might, I guess. This guy loves to gobble up anything like, like small mice or little rats or birds or even maybe a snake. Like, ooh, those things would be delicious for a frog like this. He would even love to gobble up another frog. It's a frog eat frog world. It's, I mean, it, it's true. Yep, I know it, dude. Look at that guy's eyeballs. They are really nice and big, like, whoa, in his mouth. It really does go all the way around his face. And he has those big old chubbies on the sides. He actually puffed up with some air. <gasps> Makes him look too big to eat. So the other creature's are like, man, never mind. No way. Not a bad idea. Hey, who out there would kiss that frog? Would you, or you, or you? No way, you know? It's a good thing he's already been pre-kissed. He's not a prince or princess anyways. And that, I mean, that's okay. He's still a really nice frog. I like Jabba a lot. Whoa, you know what's really kind of rad? This kind of frog comes from the Kalahari Desert out in Africa, and man, oh man, it gets hot out there. It's so hot, this guy can't be out there when the rain is gone. Like, whoa, when the rain is around and the puddles all fill up, it is open season to cruise and roam and, and make more little frogs. Although, when the rain starts to dry up and the puddles disappear, these guys kind of... They burrow right into the dirt. And they kind of try to hide all their slime and mucus makes a big old ball around them, keeping them kind of sort of safe inside. And they'll sit and wait. Sometimes months may go by before it rains again. But when it does, dude, the frogs get all that slime up off their body in a giant ball of mucus. It's basically a ball of snot and they go and they eat it. Do you guys eat your boogers? Oh, not anymore. When you were little though, possibly. I don't know. This guy eats his boogers because that's a great idea. Hey, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of energy to give him energy to climb out of the dirt and leaves and maybe make it back up to the surface where the rain is everywhere. And hey, and then it all starts over again. A pretty good idea for a frog like this. I like you there, my friend. You're always really nice. Thank you for not thinking my fingers look like a mouse or a rat because if they did, ouch. <laughs> Frogs have a big mouth sometimes. All right, let's get you back into your water there, my friend. It's getting a little bit warm out here, kind of drying just a little. There we go. Back in your water. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Got some frog slime on my fingers. There we go. So now it's time for us to get a little bit more serious, if that's okay with you. Uh, just a little serious. I brought someone really, really cool. I have my very special tool here. This is my snake hook. 
Here we go. <clears throat> oh man. My next guy is gonna pop on out of here. Let's see. How are you, dude? That out of the way. This is serious black. The King Snake. And he's really great. Mr. Serious Black here is a really awesome guy. Oh man, oh man, let's see. He's using his tongue, he's smelling, he's finding out like. <laughs> nope, you guys don't taste like lunch. I mean, luckily, look at that tongue. It's checking you guys out. He's saying, oh man, oh man, that's nice. Not a bad idea to be on the other side of the screen when you see this guy. You know, of all my snakes, I think I trust Sirius the least. I know he's a nice guy, except I've had him attach him with my finger on more than one occasion. Probably more occasions than I have fingers for, in fact. Well, which is fine. And normally, I only get bitten when it's time for feeding and everything smells like rats and things, I know. But this guy doesn't matter. He's like, oh man, what's over there? It looks delicious, whoa. In fact, one time, this guy even tried to eat the python. I was like, no way. You know what? I just popped in the bathtub for a second and he went, oh man, there's another snake in here. The, the python was like, what's that? Because you're so small, but that's okay. He's, he's got a lot of big attitude, which is pretty great. I really like Sirius. This guy's always kind of cool. I call him Sirius because sometimes if the sun hits his belly scales just right, they can change from black to silver, which is pretty cool. Hey, dude, I like you, buddy. Yep, the Mexican black king snakes, like all king snakes, are not venomous, but they'll eat almost anything they want. Uh oh, uh, even other snakes are on the menu like any time they want them. Well, in fact, <clears throat> when this guy was in his bathtub, he was taking a bath, and the bathtub that he soaks in before we come out for a show is stainless steel, which is nice, and he could see his reflection in it, and he tried to eat it. I was like, you are such a silly snake sometimes. Oh. Okay, now somebody's talking. My name's on there yeah. right next. Serious, I'm gonna let you wiggle back in your car seat. This is pretty rad. Okay, let go. He's got a maybe he'll get off though. Right there. Off the hook, let go. Beautiful job, my friend. <clears throat> Now I wanna grab someone else who I really love to see. A couple of my favorite guys, they have a head, a tail, four legs to help them cruise, and their home is right there on their body. So no matter where they're at, they're always back at home and they can take a nap. I wish I could do that sometimes. I mean, actually I'm mostly home, so I can't, I guess not, I have work to do. That's fine, that's fine. So who could that be? Do you know who that is? Starts with a T or, or a T. It's Let's check it out. Hey, my friends, it's a tortoise. <laughs> this is my buddy. This is Buttercup. Buttercup's kind of cool. Buttercup is a Russian tortoise. They like to eat plants and leaves, and then they like to poop. And sometimes they even eat their poop. I mean, they're tortoises. What do you expect? They're cool. Yep, they have their awesome shell, the carapace on top, the plastron underneath. Whoa. And this guy can walk and cruise and dig a burrow sometimes. The tortoises like to do that, you know? Oh. And here comes a turtle. Oh, dude, this is Speedy. Check him out. Speedy is a box turtle who wore his turtleneck today. Dude, it is seriously hot out right now. I don't know what he was thinking. He wore his turtleneck anyways. Like, you, they do what they want to do, and it's fine. What's well, really kind of rad, the turtle here, this box turtle has a hinge on his plastron and goes like, er, 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 er. he can close all the way. If you go back inside your shell, all the way inside. He's like, no way, dude. I'm hanging out and making friends out here. Look at that guy. He is super cool. Yep. Even this guy got his bath today. Otherwise, you couldn't see all the cool colors on his shell, all, all the cool yellows, wiggles and stuff, because they're all hidden underneath the dirt. Hey, these guys spend a lot of time digging in the ground out in their corral, which works out pretty cool. Hey, and they love to race around catching tasty things to eat, mostly plants and leaves. This guy also does eat meat. Bugs and worms, watch out. That turtle will chase you down. Whoa. And some turtles live in the water and they swim so well they can catch fish. A pretty good idea for a turtle. I know. 
I like you guys though. <clears throat> Whoa. He's checking it out. He's like, he's like, get me on the ground. I want to go and cruise. He thinks he's swimming. Check out those fingers, toes, and toenails. Pretty awesome, dude. Thank you. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. <clears throat> you know, I betcha that we can even find one of their cousins who loves to come and munch on all the grass when I visit all you guys. Uh, maybe next year when we come out there again, then this guy will definitely be like, oh yeah, it was his favorite place to roam. All the grass out there in Santa Barbara is delicious. Let me grab Mr. Tut. You can tell me if he's grown. You guys got to go back over here though. I have a hard time telling if he's bigger or if I'm just not as strong. We'll see. Hey, Mr. Tut. <clears throat> oh. There we go. Oh, geez. There's Mr. Tut, the African sulcata tortoise. Oh man, you can sit there. Oh, oh, I got him. He's sitting on my knee. He's getting heavier all the time. Like, dude, seriously? Whoa. I always like this guy, but like, I don't know what I can do with him. I don't know if I can even move him around so easily, you know? We also, of course, have his mom and his uncle. He actually hatched in our home almost 20 years ago, which is kind of cool. So you can see he's still just a kid and, and tortoise. I mean, he's still just a kid. He is. He can live over a hundred years. Whoa. This guy is the African sulcata tortoise. And man, oh man, these guys can grow pretty huge. In fact, they are the third largest tortoise species behind the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoises, who seriously, I wouldn't even try to pick those guys up. They get gigantically huge. Oh, dude. Let's see if we can get this guy on the ground and let him roam a little bit. Get a shot of him. Oh, yeah. I can't hold him any longer. Ah, you're sitting on my knee. Whoa. I always love that shell of his. It's kind of bumpy and rough a little bit. His mom's shell is really smooth because, well, she's as old as me. And I guess it's kind of the opposite. You know, I'm getting wrinkly and, and she's getting her shell smoothing out from all the wear and tear. Ooh, but see you later, dude. He's gonna have to go back over into his corral pretty soon. If I let him keep on roaming in the yard, oh geez, he'll he'll destroy whatever garden is left that they haven't eaten already. So let me pop him back over into his corral. Be right back here, my friends. Mr. Tut, you gotta go back over here, dude. Oh man. Excellent. Whew. I gotta catch my breath. That's some serious tortoise action going over there. Ooh, nice. Yep, so even though his shell is pretty thick, if you were to try to pet that guy, he'd probably know it, right? He can feel a little bit of what's going on, but not really the touch. He just knows some pressure. He's like, ooh, nice. Do you know their shell is actually something that, that we grow in our body too. It's not made out of rocks or wood, their shell is kind of neat. Their shell is their backbone and their ribs that kind of fuse that awesome home around their whole bodies, which is interesting. In fact, the outside part, the part that you can feel on a shell, like, whoa, the part you're touching is the same as your fingernails and your hair. It's keratin. Keratin makes some pretty awesome stuff like rhino horns and everything. Like, whoa. All right, dude, you guys are awesome. I know. I think we need to grab another one of my favorite friends. You might remember my next guy. Here comes Red Rufus. Excuse me there, my buddies. You guys got to move right over into the shade. Nice. Excuse me there, buddies. I brought some egg in case he's hungry, just in case. Okay. Red Rufus. Red is car seat. Hey, what's up there, dude? Whoa. Rufus is the tegu lizard from Argentina. And you know, 
tegus are kind of like raccoons because they'll eat anything they find. They're scavengers by nature. Hey, he might chase the creature down and gobble them right up, and that's okay. He might find some fruit sitting on the ground and eat it too. And in fact, anything he finds, even a garbage can, could say like, hey, come knock me over. There's food inside of here. They threw good stuff away. And he's like, dude, that's what they do. You got to hold on me to stop that, buddy. I love his really awesome scaly skin. And he's like, oh, man, I want to wiggle, which is fine. You can wiggle there, my buddy. But if you get too close to a tegu like this guy, watch out. They have a pretty good way to say, don't get so close to me. They can take that tail and give a whack. And if he whacks you, like seriously, you got too close. I know. What's up there, buddy? What? Where do you think you're trying to go? He's like, there's an egg over here. I want to gobble that egg up. It's a cooked egg, which is fine. He likes his egg cooked or raw. Either way is great for this cool lizard, guys. Let's see if we get him closer, though. He first of all, he's going to see if you guys taste all good. Like, ooh. Yeah, is that, one, is, is that friend tasty? And how about that friend over there? He's thinking, oh, man, maybe you could eat those guys. Could you? No, you guys aren't food. Don't worry. Like, you wouldn't be that tasty for a lizard anyways. Right? No, no, we're cool. Uh oh, I really love that scaly skin. Look at those chubby cheeks on this guy. Oh man, they're excellent. You just want to give that guy a squeeze. He shouldn't squeeze his cheeks. Yep. And I really love the wrinkles on his belly. That means he has room to eat and eat and eat. I know he's going to have a piece of egg right now, but then he's going to go back inside and have a little rat. Don't worry. The rats are frozen and thawed out and, and they're so it's all humane. I know. And delicious. If you like eating rats, that's the way to get them. Frozen. Whoa. Do, do you want some egg there, buddy? You want that? Oh, you want that? What do you think? He's like, he's like that egg is cold now. Oh, I know. My kids wanted some egg, but this one didn't turn out quite as good. Hey, dude, you want, you want to eat the egg? Or you just want, he's like, I want the rats. The rats are what I'm waiting for. Okay, okay. Maybe someone else will eat that. That's cool. I always like this dude. Ugh. We'll see if we can let him cruise here on the ground a little bit. Maybe if he's on the walk, he'll be ready for a snack. Here we go. Let's see. Let's come a little closer. Ground level. What do you guys think? Here, buddy. You want some egg? There you go. Nice. Some little flat rolled eggs. Yep, he's going for it, guys. Mmm, that looks delicious, Rufus. You want some more? Not gonna eat my fingers, right? Oh, good. I know. You gotta wonder sometimes if those, if those fingers are gonna get in the way when he's trying to take a bite of lunch. Here's a little bit more egg. Mm. He's such a good guy. Rufus is always my best friend. He's really, really nice. Oh, geez. Ha, huh, Rufus. You having fun? Oh, you want that last piece? You want that? How about over here on this side? No, that's me. Over here. These guys. That is pretty tasty stuff there, dude. No doubt about it. Whoa. Yep. Love that scaly skin he's in. He feels like beads almost. One more little piece there. Go for it there, dude. Super, super nice. You can eat that if you want. Oh, you gotta, he got, he's got to swallow first. You see that? Got to push that food right down his throat. Nice. I think it's just about time for us to meet another kind of creature in the show. In fact, we're getting a little bigger here, my friends. We're about to go to Australia and bring out Boomerang. And then we still have peaches. Yes, you can still hang out here, buddy. You can hang out. You can hang out in the sun and relax make some friends there we go let's bring our camera right back up to, oh yeah there Ooh. nice we're getting hot there in the sun you want the computer to turn off this happened one time 
It got too hot and the computer was like, overheating, Never mind for the sunlight. There we go. So now let me grab that cool snake hook again. I got a buddy of mine. Ooh, you know what? We didn't see this guy either. I got a couple of snakes we're supposed to meet. I think that we saw Sirius Black, but we haven't seen Rusty, Boomerang, or Peaches. So let's meet them. Hey, hey, Mr. Rusty, ready to come out and say hello? I think he is. I can catch this guy right here. Oh, man. Here we go. Rusty is really, 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 really long and lean. And as you guys can see, this guy is a serious snake who likes to climb up in the trees. He likes to hang out on the ground and hide amongst the grass. He'll go into a burrow where someone else might live and then he'll probably eat them up. It's true. That's how he catches a lot of his food is in the branches, in the burrows or anywhere he likes. He's going to give me a squeeze, aren't you? Yeah, he loves to give nice tight hugs too. I guess to get him when you can sometimes. I mean, this guy, this guy took his bath. He's pretty clean. I know. Oh, nice. Where are you trying to go? Look at those belly scales on that. Don't climb in the branches. Climbing in the branches. I'm like, Sir, I'll never get you out if you get in there. There's a nice like lavender plant here or uh, something. <laughs> He's going to hide inside. I don't want that happen. Nice. I love his awesome skin. Now, of course, Rusty is a rat snake, which means he likes to eat birds, lizards, frogs, mice. Those things are all tasty. They eat even rats occasionally. Actually, anytime he gets a chance, a rat would be a tasty snack. Although the wild rats aren't that tasty for him to eat. I have to get, keep those guys from becoming lunch. You know, but I, I don't want them. If you want them, let me know. But this guy, he gets his rats pre-frozen and thawed out nice and warm. I think he may also have some rats today after the show. And then he'll have to take a break. He won't be able to come out for work for at least a week, which isn't really that big of a deal. Because, well, you know. Someone else can take his place if I get a, if I get a show someplace. Oh, geez. So this guy, he is really cool. Look at those cool scaly belly scales. Oh, man. They know how to get a grip. Those belly scales work like fingernails to hold on to the branches and things. It's pretty excellent. I love his scales on his body, especially when they're kind of shining in the sun. Whoa. And his tongue. <laughs> He's saying, yep, you guys aren't lunch. Never mind, I'll go over there. Well, that's fine. Whatever you want to do, my friend. There we go. Rusty, the rat snake. He's super long and lean. That's good for climbing if you're a snake like this. You'll see some of my snakes aren't the best climbers, but this guy, professional. Seriously. Yeah, dude. All right, you can go back in your car seat there. Thank you very much. All the way back inside. He knows where to go. Right on back into his car seat, all the way, all the way, and then I'll tie it up. That way he doesn't escape while I'm getting the other guys out in my show. He, he tries sometimes, you know. He would love to come out when I'm not looking and, and go for a cruise. We can't let that happen. No way. All right, my friends. Perfect. Tie that. That did not tie very well. I guess I should do that better. What happened? My not tying did not work out this way. Once around. There we go. Now we're good to go. All right. In a snake bag, cool. Boomerang, come on over here. Boomerang's also pretty awesome. Let me see if I get. Oh, yeah, there he is. Hey, dude. You thought it was a bag of rice. I already ate the rice. I did. Uh oh. But having the bag helps this guy from wiggling around my car when I'm driving, if that were to happen. Not likely. Oh, yeah. Boomerang is the carpet python. Check him out. Oh, nice. He's checking you guys out. He's saying, oh, yeah, you guys all look delicious, right? Snakes are pretty awesome because, you know, it's really cool. Snakes. They don't have to make their own heat inside their bodies. In fact, no reptiles do. These guys are ectothermic to get their heat from outside of their body which is really kind of cool and rad and whoa uh, you know most of our energy because comes from us you know to making our bodies warm comes from eating food we use like 75 percent of our food to keep our body warm enough so we can digest the rest of our food hey, where are you trying to go 
He's climbing. Look at that. He's got a hold of my lights. That is not where you're supposed to be. And now he's going to get up in that tree, I think. Oh, jeez. All right, come on back here. That's not where you're supposed to go. Seriously, my friend? Oh. Dude, snakes. I'm always getting wrapped in my work, or sometimes they're getting wrapped in my work or something. I don't know. It's cool. So actually, what's kind of rad, snakes, because they do almost nothing all the time unless they want to catch their lunch or, or wiggle or cruise. They can sit there and not even eat for sometimes weeks or even over a month and just be cool with it. It's true. But when it's time to snack, they'll eat a nice big meal and they'll digest it over about a week. And then they can sit and do nothing all over again, which is excellent. It makes you think these guys sleep and sleep and sleep. But when you think about it, wait a minute, how do these guys sleep? They don't have eyelids. They can't close their eyes. Well, see, do you think they're actually sleeping? I kind of wonder that sometimes. I mean, they do almost nothing. I guess they could be just relaxing and hanging out, and which is cool. Look at that. He's checking you guys. Oh, man, you're going to climb over the... He's going to pull the laptop over, and, and that would not be good. Oh, dude. I like you there, my friend. You're a pretty awesome dude. Boomerang, the carpet python. Although I think, you know, it may be almost time for us to meet Peaches. Some of you may remember Peaches. Uh, she loves to come out to Family Vacation Center and join you for the shows. But we'll have to get her ready. Let me get this guy back into his car seat. Those are still over here hanging out behind me, sitting in the sun, enjoying life. It's totally okay. You got to go back in there, dude. Sometimes. Things don't always go the way you think they're supposed to. You gotta go back that way. There we go, okay. Right back in that car seat. Look at that. Do you know the tail starts right here? I know, that's what they pee and poop and stuff. That's what happens. That's their cloaca. Just like a bird, they go pee and poop and stuff and, no, wait a minute, back inside again. What goes in does come out again. Yep. That's how snakes work. They have all the same stuff inside their bodies that we have too. I mean, for, for the most part, they have a heart, they have lungs, although only one of their lungs actually does anything. The other one's just like tiny. Ooh, there we go, cool. Now it's time for me to go and grab Peaches and bring her on over here. Uh-oh, excuse me there, my friends, right out of the way. Need you guys to move a little bit so I have space. Okay. Peaches, come on over and say hello to all our friends. Oh, man. You guys may remember Peaches. Because she is our albino Burmese python. Hey there, buddy, I know. Look who all our friends are hanging out there today. Whoa, there we go. Peaches is that python who loves to sit across our arms. It's true. She, she has to settle for just my arms right now, which I guess that sort of, it'll do. Ooh, my shoulders, cool. There's a lot of snake there. In fact, this snake isn't even full grown. Whoa, Peaches is about 10 feet long, but could reach up to 20 feet. I mean, I hope not, not too soon, because then I'll have a hard time bringing her to shows. And I'd like to start going to shows eventually, you know? Whoa. Look at that. Now, of course, Peaches is a pretty interesting color. This is not the normal color that she's supposed to be. It being yellow might not help her hide that well. And at this size, not a big deal usually, but as a baby at about 18 inches or so, you know what? She can become somebody's lunch pretty quickly. I mean, dude. In the wild, these snakes are normally green and kind of brown in color, so they blend in much more easily. But she's an albino snake, which is really popular for people to have in, as pets. So, so someone caught some albino python or albino python and bred them a long, long time ago. And over all the years, they got a chance to make lots of albino pythons. And so now you see these guys. Pretty cool. Oh, dear. Yeah, Peaches is really, really rad. I like these guys a bunch. Oh, yeah, look at that cool scale of skin. I'll get her nice and close. Well, 
real, really nice. And the belly scoots on her are really, really big. Now she's not the best of the climbing snakes, not this guy. Her body's just a little bit too thick for climbing in the trees. She likes to hang out on the ground. She'll go into a marsh or, or like a swampy kind of area and, and float pretty easily or swim at least. And yep, they like to hang on the ground and push to the leaves and just, it's cool. Tree climbing, it can happen, but it's not like where you're gonna find this guy all the time, at least when they're, when they're on the bigger size. Oh, dude. You know, guys, you have been so, so awesome hanging out and checking out my friends. It's true that in the jungles and the forests and the deserts, you can find all kinds of awesome stuff. But what's really excellent is using your eyes and watching those things and observing them. That's like science right there. Whoa, that's a great way to learn about the creatures that you find around your home or anywhere you go. And when you do see animals, you can just check them out so carefully, write down what you learn in a journal, which is great. But touching, I gotta say, is not the best choice that you can make. You know, some animals are pretty cool for holding on to or touching, it's true. But a lot of animals, especially wild animals or animals you don't know, they might protect themselves and do. A wild animal can bite or scratch or sting. Some wild animals are venomous and poisonous. And hey, I think it's better if we give those guys their space and check them out. And that's always okay. Of course, when you guys decide that it's a good idea to touch, and sometimes it may be, please be sure to wash your fingers when you're done. Because, I mean, believe me, animals poop and pee. They do. Like seriously, all the time. I, I get peed and pooped on all the time when I hold the animals I know. And so I know it happens. And besides, if you eat, you poop. Everybody poops. It's just a good book. You know, I mean, anyways, remember to please go wash your hands before you have a snack or pick your nose. That's always really nice. And whoa, when I see you guys again, until then, be safe. Now, guys, before I let you go, if anyone has a question, I would love to do my best to answer it. I don't know everything. Maybe not even that much of everything, but I know a couple things. So, hey, if you have a reptile related question or about animals of other kinds, I know a few other animals too, or anything you want to say, please unmute yourself and say, hey, or, or what's up? Or a question. That'd be cool. Yeah, what's up? I see your hand. Yeah, you hit the mute button, Stu, so I can um, hear you. Where can I get a snake? Oh, man, that's a great question. <laughs> Snakes you know, are actually available as pets. A lot of pet stores do sell snakes. You gotta probably talk to your parents before you go and buy a snake though and bring it home. I mean, when you go to college, go ahead and do anything you want. But no. but but until no. then, no? no? Oh, okay. No, because it doesn't work but, for me. But, no snakes at college. <laughs> I'm sure there's more snakes there than you realize. Oh no. So, but you know what? Snakes can be really cool and interesting pets. Uh, but I got to say, it does take quite a bit of time and energy. You got to get their enclosure nice. Oh, I'm sat in the dirt and got all kinds of dust on me. Thanks. Uh, anyways, it, it does take some time to take care of them. You, got, you should probably read a couple of books about snake keeping. Ooh, probably the best beginner snake would be a corn snake or a milk snake. Those guys are pretty awesome too. Corn snakes, like the rat snakes, are really interesting guys. They don't get really huge like, like this. Like seriously, whoa, that's a lot of snake there. You, you don't want to start with this guy right off the bat. I know. We have uh, a question from Gail. Questions for my creepy crawly friends. Gail wanted to know, how do they keep their eyes moist if they have no eyelids? Oh, that's a great question, actually. So technically they don't have eyelids, but they actually do have a scale that covers over their eyeball. You can't see it. Oh, where you go, my friend? Because it's translucent. It's clear, but ooh, it's a scale that covers their eyeball 24 seven. It doesn't move, it doesn't come off. Well, it does come off when they shed their skin. It comes off with the rest of their skin. It's one of their scales, which is pretty excellent. So that keeps their eye nice and safe inside. It's, it's like a little force field of, of a scale. It's a, just one little scale that covers their eyeball. So I guess maybe their eyes are always closed and technically, whoa. Hmm. Anyways, it happens sometimes. Cool, cool guys. Any other questions for my buddy or for me? If not, you guys did awesome. Thanks so much for hanging out. 
and check well, it out. Thank you very much, Matt. Let's give a big round of applause. Let's give a big, big, good job. Thank you for being here with us. Like I said, Matt's been with us for over 10 years at the Family Vacation Center. We will see you next summer. Just like I can't wait to see all of our families and friends back again next summer. Oh, well, thank totally, you, everybody. Yeah. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. Adios.